Today's video is going to be about the brain and it's going to take you through the names of the parts of the brain you need to know for your A-level biology and also what each of those parts of the brain does. So obviously the brain is part of the central nervous system and it is the place where information from the hormonal system and the nervous system is coming in and it's processed and then acted on in the brain. The brain itself is made up of approximately 86 billion neurons and it's surrounded by this protective layer called the meninges and meningitis is actually um, an illness when you get an infection in your meninges. There are three main sections here that you need to know the names of. So pause the video for a second or two and see if you can remember from your GCSE biology what the names of parts one, two and three are. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. Uh, so let's have a look at the answers. So part one is the cerebrum. And that is the part of the brain that controls your voluntary actions. So it's your senses, your learning, your behaviour, your personality. Uh, part two is your cerebellum. And that is your unconscious functions. So um, non-voluntary movements, posture and balance. And then part three is the medulla oblongata. And that is where we have the autonomic nervous system, so the unconscious control of things like breathing rate, heart rate, um, and from the last video you'll have learned the autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic um, nervous systems and they are both situated in the medulla, or both start in the medulla oblongata. The other thing that we've just labelled on there is the spinal cord and obviously that can connects the brain um, to the rest of the body. So let's have a look at the cerebrum in a little bit more detail. The cerebrum is actually uh, split into two halves. We've got the left and the right halves. Each half is referred to as, as a hemisphere and each one of those controls half of the body. Now there's a crossover at the top of the spinal cord so actually the left side of the body is controlled by the right hemisphere and the right side of the body is controlled by the left hemisphere and what that does is allows the brain to be able to judge distance and perspective. The other part of the brain that's quite important here is the, bit air, the area in blue, which is the frontal lobe. And that is the area which is quite sophisticated in the brain and it's where reasoning and decision making occur. Now, that was uh, discovered because of a chap called Phineas Gage, um, who actually had an accident um, and he had um, kind of a, a piece of metal which actually went through his brain um, and they studied him and were able to understand um, what the frontal lobe in the brain was actually used for because of the change in his behaviour. And so what happens in the cerebrum is that we have sensory areas where we have information coming in from those sensory neurons in the body and the sensory areas um, are size dependent um, on the amount of senses that are coming into them. So for instance, uh, your hands um, will have a lot of information, a lot of sensory information coming through. So they that part of the brain will be quite a large part of the brain to pick up that sensory information. That is then sent, information in that part of the brain then goes to an association area where the information is analysed and it's acted on and then that goes to a motor area part of the brain which sends um, impulses back down motor neurons to have an impact so that we have an effect on the body. Now this strange looking picture is called a sensory homunculus and what scientists have done is they have enlarged areas of the body 
which provide the most sensory information to the brain. So here you can see that the hands, they provide the largest amount of information, sensory information to the brain, the lips, the tongue, the, um, the eyes, the nose. So actually it's those five senses that we learn about when we're children because that is, they are our biggest senses and they are provo providing most information to our brain. The next two parts of the brain that you need to know about are the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Now they're situated really close together. Um, the pituitary gland is about the size of a pea. Um, and if we look at each one of those in turn, the hypothalamus is the controlling region for the autonomic nervous system. So remember the autonomic nervous system is the involuntary parts of the body. Okay, so um, subconscious control. And that has two regions. It has a region for the parasympathetic nervous system and for the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic, remember, was fight or flight. Parasympathetic was rest and digest. Right next door to that, because these two um, parts of the brain are really closely linked, is the pituitary gland, often referred to as the master gland. And that is an endocrine gland and it stores and releases hormones. Now, the pituitary gland, if you look at it in this diagram here, you can see that it's split into the anterior and the posterior pituitary. It is the um, gland that controls most of the other glands in the body. The anterior pituitary produces about six different hormones, including FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, that you will have learned about um, at GCSE. The posterior uh, tends to store and release hormones that have been produced by the hypothalamus. An example of that is ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone. And again, you will have um, learned about that at GCSE with the kidney function. The hypothalamus is used, it's got kind of three main functions. It controls behaviour patterns, okay, so things like um, sleeping, feeding, aggression, that's all controlled within the hypothalamus. It also has a massive blood supply passing through it and it's constantly monitoring the blood plasma composition. So it's looking at concentrations of glucose, concentrations of water um, that are within the blood. Or the blood plasma and it itself is an endocrine gland producing hormones. Okay so what I'd like you to have a go at now are these questions. Um, basically you just have to identify which part of the brain we are talking about in each one of these situations and why you have given a reason for your choice. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video have a go at answering these on a piece of paper and then when you're ready to look at the answers, come back to the video again. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go. So let's have a look at each one. So after drinking too much alcohol, a man fell over as he tried to get up out of the chair. That part of the brain would be the cerebellum because that's the bit that controls your balance. Um, B, a person suffered a head injury and was no longer able to communicate verbally, so that means they weren't able to speak. That's the cerebrum, okay, that's part of the brain that controls your speech. C, after a horse riding accident, a man was paralysed from the neck downwards, that's going to be the spinal cord, okay, because there's no longer going to be able to have impulses passing from the brain to the peripheral um, nerves. D, a tumour caused a woman to go blind in her left eye, although her eye still responded to light. So here this is part of the cerebrum, but a better answer would be the right cerebral hemisphere. Remember that the left um, side of the body goes to the right cerebral hemisphere, um, and that's where uh, obviously vision is controlled. E, Due to blood vessels dying in part of the brain, a girl's heart started to beat irregularly. That's going to be the medulla oblongata, because that's where heart rate is controlled. And finally, a man developed dementia and gradually lost his memory. That's going to be his cerebrum, which is, again, the part of the brain that controls memory.